Love from love, hope from hope, and peace from our Prince of Peace. When the Lord's presence came upon me, it felt like the power of all things glorious squeezed together as the unity of love's greatest glory came forth, which was a, a beautifully divine remarkability that only our Father of Lights ever could have imagined. And as his presence of wisdom, love, and faith came forth, it held the overflowing strength of Samson, the wisdom of Solomon, and the passion of Elijah for the world's spiritual restoration of all things, as Yeshua HaMashiach promised in Matthew 17, 11. So love from love, hope from hope, and peace from peace from he who is the prince thereof. And all will be blessed that receive this word of little children. For a little child shall lead us into the new age, the, the verb-like love of a little child that Christ said, in order to be born again, we must be as a little children with our love alive. And so when it will come forth unto all receiving, it will be far more stronger than love's force, always winning force of the spirit of prophecy, for he will everlastingly bring forth the most excited living hope's very best blessings of mercy on all receiving his word of love, hope, and patience for these days of Elijah. Welcome, and this is the time for the greatest amazement of all. And our Lord has saved the very best for last. So we must ask, what did the Lord mean when he said we must be as children? For in this hour, we have to realize that the very best way to make help any children to be good is to help them to be happy. For, for little kids are the hands by which we can take hold of heaven and the spirit of one of us moving forth as a child will become millions and billions in the age of the lion and the lamb. Every child is a different kind of flower and all together they all make this world a most beautiful garden. And as soon as, as the Lord prophesied that we must be as little children, he taught his own to realize that children are the world's most valuable resource and it is the best hope for the future. And he condemned anyone that tampered with the soul of an innocent. And uh, because the soul is healed by being like children and even being with children, because we have forgotten what it is to be alive, bitterness and unforgiveness eats us up. And then we no longer have love as a child. Our love, instead of a verb, it becomes a noun. And we stand in the land of the walking dead where our love is, is not moving, our faith is dead. So in this time, we must teach all of our children to dream with their eyes wide open. And to uh, a child, love is always spelled uh, with big uh, butterfly kisses because they're of their innocence and we should not have them grow up too fast. Take away their uh, game toys for a little bit. Have a little family time. Be like your children, for the child is the beauty of God present in our world, which is the greatest gift to all families. And the best way to uh, move forward is by remembering when we were carefree. Uh, because children are the reason that I laugh and smile, and that's part of the reason I want to get up every morning. Because the, ch my, ch the child's minds, they are not content containers to be filled, but rather they are to be uh, fire that is to be kindled, and love alone can do this. So realize now that history will judge us by the difference that we make in every day.
day-to-day -day lives of all of our children. And remember always that a person is a person, no matter how small. So may we all together give our children roots to grow and wings to fly, for we are all born as a genius. And, uh, but we must open our eyes and see through a glass darkly no more, for children are the living messages that we are sending into a different time that we will never see. So please excuse our messes because our children are busy making memories, for all of us as little kids were nothing but uncut diamonds, and but many have been with pressure and time been converted back into nothing more than coal as we let our love die. And then we would be cast out into the outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. So it's time to be happy for no reason at all, like a little child, because if we're happy for a reason, then we're in trouble because the reason can be taken from us. So it's time to give all the little ones a chance to practice what they're learning. And it's time to realize that more than ever, kids need opportunities. They, they need to be jumping rope, bicycling. Uh, they need to be fort building. And this is, uh, this will get them, give them true balance so that a, a certain centeredness can't emerge. So let's all lose the art of growing without losing our inner child. We must stay alive and realize that every happy memory created for the little ones is, is another treasure of a lifetime. So let us turn towards our children. The hearts of the fathers must turn to the children. Malachi 4, 6, or this earth would end up being utterly destroyed. But praise God, unless these days were cut short by the living word of God moving forth as a, as a great explosion in the world, no flesh could be saved. This is the hour to beat our sword of our conditional love into the sickle of his unconditional love as everlasting gospel of Revelation 14 says for in this hour it is time to turn our attention to the little children and while we try to teach our children all about life our children will teach us what life and love is really all about because many of us have forgotten what love is like when it's free uninhibited and we don't have to get drunk in order to wake up the little child in us. It is a choice, and it's choice to see the world as half full instead of half empty. There, most people are good, and it's Christ the Lord living in all of them. For he is love, and those who love are born of him. So let us sacrifice our today so that our children can have a better tomorrow. And let them uh, teach us how to walk uh, and not take life so seriously. For none of us have a monopoly on wisdom. But one thing's for sure. Children are one-third of our population, and they are absolutely all of our future. So it's time to believe in ourselves, to time to be spontaneous, and time to choose to look at the stars and make wish upon them. For the Lord will send forth his most blessed wishes unto us if we will only open our hands and realize always that we are all braver than we believe, stronger than we seem, and smarter than we think if we choose the wide road not. Let us choose the narrow road of unconditional love so that we can learn the ways of war no more as it is foretold in Isaiah 2 and Micah 4 upon the world's latter day mountain filled with overflowing spiritual food and in this hour it is time to rev up our engines. And so hear the bluebird of happiness call our name for the Lord is our roaring lion of Zion, and he 
is calling our names louder than ever before. But realize now that uh, love will change this world one heart at a time. And for that reason, that Lion of Zion is also roaring as loudly as a, a little itty bitty kitty softest whispering uh, joyous happy purr for it shall all be accomplished not by power nor by might but by the spirit of love if we can just hang on in there and learn to have patience in this day where we need it the most and it came about that the veil was lifted and suddenly we could see and the Lord celebrates clarity the Lord is not an author of confusion but he is the maker of children and the sending of he who sends the blessing of little pitter patter in our houses we have forgotten what it's like to be as a child we're way too hard on ourselves and many other people many times. Mickey and many, my good friends, uh, have reminded me it's a small world after all. And it's been a world of fears, festering ones. And only Christ's perfect love can cast out all of our fears and help us to be as little children again. I have a vision for the kingdom age rising that is glorious. I can't share it with the world because I'd be casting my pearls before swine. And so in this hour, it's time for the little hoggies to become little piglets and uh, quit being big hogs, especially hog heaven. The Bible says those who love are born of God and know him because he is love, but they think only they can love. And that would not apply to anyone that believes anything other than they do. The literal aspect of the Word of God is literal in many cases. And Sir Isaac Newton foretold one would come insisting on his literal interpretation of Bible prophecy amidst much clamor and much opposition. And in this hour, it is time to rise up a candle of hope for Minnie Mouse and for Donald and for Mickey and for Goofy because Lord knows uh, he knows how to uh, tell a joke because he's created a lot of us goofy people who are living jokes unto our own self and we don't even get the punchline because we don't understand who the heck we are we are beings of love we are angel wannabes or demon wannabes one or the other and all the demon wannabes are angelic when they were born but they've learned to let their love be destroyed because the world has been paved with conditional love that is not divine at all and we practice turning on and off the light switch of our love and we rationalize and justify why it's okay not to love that one anymore why to to uh, strike that one out of our house and we have become so shallow in our love but uh, here we are the whole world worships a god supposedly in spirit and in truth but here's the problem the covenant of the master that is supersedes any other word of god is the kingdom age covenant of Jeremiah 31 foretold to tear down all kingdoms of man's imagination not built solely upon the Lord's unconditional love and I am one line by line precept by precept do I come forth as a destroying storm even as a hell storm pulling down the distortionalities so that the wise can see clearly as as uh, the wise are foretold to be able to do in the latter days and so in this hour it is time to experience freedom even the freedom that the Bible says that we can have if we will let Christ light the torch in our mind and if we will let him light the torch in our mind then we can be turned into a trailblazer one who will begin 
uh, burning up a wildfire of passionate love in this world. And it's time that the Lord wants to remove all of our shame and guilt as it is written in upon the latter day mountain, which is overflowing with spiritual food, the Bible says in Isaiah 25. And upon that latter day mountain would all the shame and guilt be removed because the Lord God is saying to all people, I am your God, you are my people. I have forgiven your iniquity and I will never remember it. I will write my law and my love upon your heart. Beyond that, no one will ever even need to be taught in me, says the Lord God Almighty. For all who love me as a little child and have their faith alive as a child, know me because I am the love living within them, says Jehovah Nisi, the banner of love, who is the Lord God over all of mankind. Jeremiah 32, 27. Anyone that does not have the Lord God of all mankind has a false God. They have a God that's a respecter of man and ha likes them best. They are the favorites. Secret knowledge, you know, gives them their salvation and makes God like them best, you know. But the truth is, Jesus said that he also would be the good shepherd over all the flocks of man. Christians have a God that loves them so much best that anyone else that does not believe that he is love, he is going to hate them eternally and make sure they burn forever and ever in total anguish. That is not what the Word of God says. Sure, people will be cast out if they commit the unforgivable sin of letting Christ within us his light to go out and then we would be cast out into the outer darkness where there would be weeping and gnashing of teeth but in this hour of the covenant being given to Israel and all mankind it is provable because they have inherited all mankind you see a great distortion happened 2,000 years ago when early Christians grabbed and stole the Hebrew books and then they declared that we are Israel and all the prophecy was for us in this hour, Isaiah 54, 3 is resounding, and the Lord God is saying that Israel has now inherited all mankind because the covenant that makes all faith on earth obsolete has come, just as the last sentence of Hebrews 8 has says. Paul reiterated and rewrote Jeremiah 31 that would be given unto Israel in the latter days and if it did not happen in the latter days then uh, God's book would be a lie and God would be a liar but it has happened in the latter days one like Moses has come I am a kingdom age covenant giver I am the latter day Daniel of Daniel 12 13 who has embraced my destiny as the Elijah of this age I am the alcoholic of Genesis 49 12 Shiloh one whose eyes are red and dull of wine who has teeth white as milk because they're fake <laughs> but one thing for sure the Lord knew that even though my soul has been transgressed by wine the just will live by my faith because there even though my soul is not upright because there is no damn good man no not even one Romans 3.10, none of us are any damn good, but yet most of us are good people because it's Christ kept alive within us. But in this time, we must beat our swords of conditional love into the sickle of unconditional love for the harvest of love. For Jesus Christ Almighty has proven himself to be the sower of the seed of love who has overtaken his own reaper as Amos 7 foretold. And in this hour the message of Malachi 3.1 that comes forth for this world opens all the canons in the days of the latter day Daniel and Daniel 12.13. For the shattering of the power of the holy people Daniel 12.7 must be because it, all the canons must open. Uh, because God's word was only closed until the time of the end, Daniel 12, 9. And it had to open for the message of Malachi 3, 1, that prepares Christ's own way, so he's not kept in reserve in heaven, unable to return because his restoration of understanding 
of his love did not happen. Uh, Acts 3.21 declares he would, could not even return. For there has been a mystery of God that is now revealed when the covenant was given correctly to Israel and all mankind as it is written. It straightens up all the, um, all the favoritism and all the respecter of men garbage revealing that the Lord who has been revealed is a false God of Christianity and yet he is the true majesty of majesties. He is the lamb-hearted lion of God and the lion-hearted lamb of God. And in this hour, as a little child, it's time to get with his program of love, if we can but move forward. And so I welcome all of you to a time when we can celebrate his love moving forth now as a great flood. And we can say to, to his flood of love to stop in the middle of our uh, dried up valleys and it will not obey you. He's going to rip up all the trees, all the dead stuff, rip it up right by the roots as he tears down the mountains and lifts up the valleys. So there shall always be one Lord of love over one loving people. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.